follow along as I show you how easy it is to make sure that your strategy never misses a trade on MetaTrader 5. For this episode, all you need is a way to poll MetaTrader 5 to get candlesticks. If you don't know how to do that, check out my episode, How to Get 50,000 Candlesticks from MetaTrader 5. Once you know how to do that, let's jump right on in. Over three episodes, I'm showing you how to monitor your MetaTrader so that you never miss a trade. The first episode is Never Miss a Candlestick, and this shows you how to monitor MetaTrader so that you catch every single candlestick that relates to your strategy. The second episode is about managing all of your orders, and I'll show you how to manage your orders so that you reduce your trading risk. The third episode is an advanced way to man manage all of your orders so that you are able to trade multiple strategies on the same MetaTrader 5 account. Let's start by getting into monitoring MetaTrader 5 for every new candlestick. Now, this sounds really complicated, but it's actually reasonably straightforward, and hopefully this code will show you how straightforward it actually is. So the first thing that we want to do is to do a little bit of a sanity check to make sure that our startup was successful. If you recall from a previous episode as part of the series, we talk about our startup function as being a way to start MetaTrader 5, make sure that we can log in and that we can get data from it successfully. So as I'm sure you could realize, if you want to monitor MetaTrader 5 for new candlesticks, making sure that it started up successfully is pretty important. Then the next thing we want to do is to set up a variable to capture the current time. And uh, we'll get into where we get that variable from in a moment. Uh, and then we want to set a variable for <clears throat> checking the previous time. Now, to give you a little bit of an insight as to how this works, you can imagine that a candlestick has a set start and finish time. So if we get the current time and we compare it to the previous time, if those two values are not equal, a new candlestick has happened. All right. <clears throat> so let's start our while loop. So we want our trading function to run as long as while is true, which basically means we set it to one. Basically, what we're saying here is, is that unless we send in a keyboard interrupt, this function is going to keep running. Now, for more advanced users, you might want to add something in there that you could, you know, press Q on your keyboard or some kind of like user input. I don't go into that in this series because I think that it's a little bit further than we need to go. So we're just going to use the while one, while true, keep trading. Okay. Now I'm going to put the settings for the Panda set options to make all the columns show up the top there. Okay, and you can see here, what we've got is we're retrieving candlesticks, we're running our stuff through the strategy, and then we're coming back. Now, if I was to push play, it's just going to keep spamming MetaTrader 5. So what we really want to do is to only implement a trade if a new candlestick has happened. Or before we even implement the trade, we only want to implement a check to see if a trade it needs to occur for a new candlestick. So here's how we get the value for the current time. We're going to use... Uh, BTC USD, so Bitcoin USD, because that trades 24 7, which means that we can get the current time throughout the entire week. If you want to use a different time, that's fine. Just be aware that for things like the USD JPY or it's kind of like your more legacy Forex currency pairs, they don't trade during the weekend and that may cause you some issues. So, all we're going to do is we're going to use our MetaTrader 5 library get candlestick function that we did way, way back near the start of the series. And we're just going to retrieve a single candle. Using the time frame that we're trading our strategy on. And then from that candle, we're going to extract the time. That time then gets assigned to current time. Then we compare the current time with the previous time. Now, because of the way that we've retrieved the current time, which is always going to be from the most recent candle, 
the moment that that candle changes, we're going to get a trade. The moment we get a new candle, we then want to run it through our strategy and see if a trade needs to occur. So I'll update the, the spacing, Python being a white space aware uh, language, we need to make sure that all our tabs are in line. And if we don't have a new candle, then we don't want to do anything. Now, quick little note here, you'll note in here that I put a time.sleep equals one. Now, if you're doing really, really high frequency trading, this may be a problem. But in my experience, if I run MetaTrader 5 without putting in that time.sleep, one, it absolutely smashes my CPU, which makes the rest of my computer slower. But also, I find it does lead to the program crashing at least once a day, which is obviously not ideal when I'm trying to make the strategy run autonomously. All right, so let's print the new candle. And then I'm just going to run it to make sure that it is actually triggering that. You can see there it just keeps going. And the reason for that is I never actually update the previous time. So I'll go up here to do that now. But what I can say is that comparison function is going to work. Okay. Give it another run and it should just trigger once. There we go. How good is that? Now what we're going to do is to clean up our main function a little bit and maybe make it a little bit easier and more modular. As you'll notice with all of my code, I put a lot of effort into doing this because it really does make debugging much simpler in the future for me and hopefully for you as well as you get into this. You can see there's a few things that we can pull into a separate function and I'm going to call this function uh, in a way that allows us to run the strategy so that we can just pass the strategy in at any given time. That's going to simplify main and also allow us to kind of innovate on this in the future if we ever want to. So here's our function. We're going to call it run strategy. And as I do with all of my functions, I always make sure that I comment my code effectively. So important. Okay, so we return a true if it runs successfully. So let's go through the things that we can pull out of our main function and put in this strategy function. Clearly, the first thing is the, the symbols that our strategy applies to. So we can extract that out. Then we can pull out the time frame that we're going to be trading. And we'll keep the time frame in main at this point in time because that will allow us to use it uh, when we're doing our polling of MT5 to get our uh, new candles. But I'm going to move it to go in the startup section. Okay. Using it straight out of the settings, make sure that the time frame is always going to be the same but for the strategy and for main. Then we're going to run through the strategy for all of the symbols that are selected. And that's as simple as copy and pasting it.
Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm just going to return true at the bottom of the strategy. And that's because a lot of my error handling is actually taken care of in the MetaTrader 5 library and the strategy library. So I feel like if it gets to the end of running through all of those uh, various things that we need for the strategy, it has truly run. So I'm just going to return true. And I'll turn it here if you wanted to make your code a little bit more complex would be to put in a statement that if data returned false, then to throw an error. The challenge with doing that, of course, would be that you would then need to go back through all of your error handling earlier and make sure that if you did return false, it was for a breaking problem. Now we're going to update our if current time not equal to previous time section of main and simply just run the strategy. Okay, if we push play here, let's see what happens. And we can see here we've got a false in the terms of there's no trade to happen, but a true that the strategy did run correctly. It's just that in this case, the strategy identified there was no trade that needed to happen. So let's make that a little bit clearer. So if data returns false, we either have that a trade did not occur or no trade was identified. Again, because we've done a lot of our error handling earlier, I'm using this function in main to simply just deal with the execution flow. So if data returns true, that means that a trade has been made and made successfully as in an order has been placed on MetaTrader 5. And we can print both of those outcomes to the screen, making it a lot easier to understand what's going on. Can now remove that print statement. And just to really make it straightforward in terms of testing, although you can easily comment out this print statement for yourself, we're going to print it here, no new candle sleeping. That'll just make it super clear what's happening. Let's push play. What do we have? No candle on our USDJPY.A, which is a raw account, and we're sleeping. In the next episode, I'll show you how to do a little bit of your risk management when it comes to your strategy by managing your orders.